right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to another episode of The Business, number 26, number 26, Woo! and we've learned nothing from it. <laughs> I, I'm your host, Curtis, and this is uh, our co-host, uh, Brian. Uh, he is uh, holding the fort down in Hawaii. <laughs> Gotta love it. And we have a cavalcade of wonderful artists uh, that contribute to um, the, uh, the, the, the lexicon of American art, as well as, the, uh, the, as, well as backing up uh, your favorite musicians uh, in their album art and in flyer design, uh, some of it's street art. Uh, but I'm really excited about having all these guys here because uh, it, it just, I, I want to get everybody's perspective on this. Uh, let's go down the line. We got Parker Jacob. Uh, oh. Hey, Parker Jacob is uh, one of my favorite artists. He's actually designed the last <laughs> monkey albums for us. Uh, and uh, he uh, is involved with a bunch of other really cool projects. Uh, he does all the monster design for Yo Gabba Gabba. Uh, he does the design for uh, the monster design behind the uh, Aquabat Super Fun Show. Uh, he works uh, as a line artist for Disney. Uh, he does. Um, uh, he, he's what? Sometimes you know. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Whatever okay. I'm just. I'm just gonna go, guys. Yeah. We'll just let like, this we'll Yeah. Really great. Right. Sorry. Sorry about the gravitas in the room. <laughs> well, right. if you if you think that he's too special for you, just understand that his big new project is called Santa on a Panda. So, oh. <laughs> so that takes that takes him down to a, a, a notch to to, to uh, instead of being scary, just lovable in general, just, uh, which just is how I think. <laughs> Uh, the next one we have, uh, this is a real uh, uh, honor for me, uh, Greg Deal. Uh, he's a Native American uh, street artist uh, and, uh, and visual uh, artist of, of many different mediums. Uh, he's well known for not just his uh, Native American kind of uh, pathos uh, behind his art, uh, but also he is... Um, uh, he's kind of been brought to American attention or the sky attention because uh, he got... Um, he got he got a little little bit of little bit of coverage for a picture of a Native American uh, girl wearing an interrupter's T-shirt, and so that kind of went uh, viral there for a minute. So yes, wow. there you go, there you go. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> so, I know that. So <laughs> I'm 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 super honored that that he, uh, he he took a cold call and joined us on the show. Uh, the next artist we have is uh, Duke Duel. Duke Duel uh, is a poster uh, flyer and album artist for many different musical acts from Southern California and beyond. Uh, he's done work for Monkey. He's done work for the uh, for Unsteady. He's done work for the Slackers. Uh, and now he's working on uh, John Roy's new project, Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, I cannot wait to see uh, what, it, what the art looks like because everything that he does has a very sharp uh, design to it. So I, I really enjoy his work. And then uh, we have a local artist. Uh, this is Kyle Lester. Uh, sometimes we call him Kai Kai. Uh, he's uh, he's one of our one of our favorite little uh, uh, our artists and musicians in the area. Punk rock musician, a punk bassist, uh, and uh, guitar bass and guitar. And uh, he does work work for uh, his band NVS and for a band called the Ruffies. And for uh, he's done some flyer work for Van Goat and and uh, the Caravan oh, yeah. Lounge in downtown. And uh, he works with a with a uh, an artist collective called Local Color, and they they help artists out not only in uh, uh, promoting a safe place for them to do their art and to and um, and the avenues by which they need to talk to people about doing like uh, murals and that sort of thing, uh, but they also offer like uh, uh, legal. Um, uh, Council. information for artists so that they can get uh, their their work out to the masses. So I'm really happy to have you guys all here on the program. Yeah. Woo! Let's start. I will say <laughs> local color is not necessarily a safe space because the last time I was there, I smashed a guitar. So it can be a little dangerous. <laughs> dangerous <Yeah>. for guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so on the show we only have uh, we only have two questions. One I ask at the beginning. One I ask at the end. Uh, the beginning question is very simple. Uh, what did you do to keep yourself from going absolutely batshit insane uh, this last year during COVID? Did it affect you negatively? Did it affect you positively? How did it come out in your art? Uh, and let's uh, let's start with uh, we'll we'll start with Duke. 
Duke, okay. tell me. Yeah. Uh, well, I built Legos like a crazy man. That's what kept me sane. <laughs> I bought like every single Star Wars set, including the huge Millennium Falcon and the Star Destroyer, and that was my job for like five months because I was actually off of work. Yeah. Because uh, I work at a sign shop, and uh-huh. we didn't have any business. I mean, we had a skeleton crew, like two people working out of like eight. So, um, and then uh, my work, I actually went into the quarantine with, I'm going to get a piece done every day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, you know, three months later, I'm just neck deep in Legos. And, um, but I did get some stuff done. I got how, I got a few things done, Legos but uh, other than that, in the middle of the night, <laughs> I didn't because I have a I've like I got like a shop light in my living room. Oh, nice. So and then I took the carpet away, and we have got light floors. So none, none. I, I have good. no Lego uh, Lego yeah, stars. Just to let floor. you know, Lego came out with a special flip flop, a a a a, a, uh, a shoe that you wear when you're around people that do Legos and they have a big spongy bottom. So you never feel the Legos as you step on them. Oh, that <laughs> Good Lord. That, that's gotta be making some money. Holy I cow. Had a Lego on Instagram. <laughs> I saw that actually recently. thought it was pretty smart. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Legos and, and uh, did you learn any, uh, did, 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 did you feel that the art this year uh, that was coming out of you was more uh, conducive of the times or were you just kind of like, well, I'm just going to do Legos for a while and kind of experience that to its fullest degree? Well, I had some like some okay. uh, private commissions uh, to like from some people that were actually politically not my thing. So I'm not <laughs> going to get into it, but um, I had some private commissions that I did for some folks uh, uh, and, but what I actually did is I actually, the pieces, since I had more time to work on the pieces that I actually wound up did doing, I got super detailed with a lot of stuff. I actually kind of tried to refine my style a little bit. Um, uh, I actually had to relearn how to draw with my right hand because I broke my hand a couple years ago and I hadn't picked up a pencil since just, just, uh, just a mouse. So, um, it was it was interesting that you know I kind of relearned to draw. Excellent. So I can now draw without <laughs> my hand aching. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Uh, Kyle, yeah. what 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 did you uh, what did you do this year? How did you keep from going insane? Um, video games <laughs> helped. Um, <laughs> to be honest, uh, but I I did actually I filled up quite a bit uh, of sketch pads with with drawing. So I I kind of I feel like I kind of took it a step back a little bit and focused okay. on that more. Um, which is good because it helped help me come up with more concepts and more more things that I can do uh-huh. um, in in a bigger form and uh-huh. know, rework it into something bigger. Um, that's that's mostly it. Um, having the space at local color has been nice. That that's actually a recent addition, um, just because I have the opportunity to go there and and okay. dick around and just kind of have a, a place where I can go play with spray paint and paint nice. pens and see what yeah. comes out of it. So. Nice, cool, cool. Greg, uh, how how did uh, how did the lockdown affect you? Did your did did your business go up? Did it go down? Did you did you find that it? Uh, I, I noticed that um, a lot of your artwork has kind of a kind of a political or a message behind it. Uh, did you fi- find that the message changed? Um, gosh, I mean, I've been doing this for uh, long enough that you know there's there's sort of a leeway to things, so. Um, I had a lot of, I had a bunch of major projects that all got pushed out because of COVID. And so they all happened at the same time. So I looked super, super prolific last summer um, because these projects have been in the works anywhere from nine to nine months to uh, two years. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they just all happened at the same time. Um, But I was busy. Uh, I actually took a job for the first time in my adult life, um, which I kind of did on a dare. Uh, My friend started a company and he asked me to be a creative director and I said, okay. And I did that for a year. So that saved my skin because pretty much all my extra uh, things, speaking engagements and um, extra jobs and things uh, pretty much just disappeared. Um, And so I'm actually going to be leaving that job and I am uh, back on course. Uh, but last year I, uh, managed to win a grant that I applied for oh, cool. before COVID hit. Um, and so I've been working on a performance piece installation called, uh, the punk pan Indian romantic comedy. Cool. Um, it is storytelling and it is like installation. It's like representation of indigenous people, but also this intersection 
of um, about punk and indigenous identity. That's and cool. um, I actually, really cool. I'll show you, I, I did like the branding for it. It just says nice. the punk pen and romantic <laughs> comedy. And, and I'm writing some original work, um, some original songs for it. So I have some musicians helping me with it. And so the band for the punk pen Indian romantic comedy are the dead pioneers. Nice. And uh, so I've got, yeah, I've got patches and, you know, all kinds of stuff that I've been doing. Um, got a couple murals in, but again, those were scheduled ahead of time. And so I think it made me feel like that I was busy, but you know, as soon as a lockdown hit in March, uh, I don't think I saw anything really even wiggling yeah. until May. And that was, that was a little disheartening and I was grateful to have a job. Um, but, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I got five kids. So it's never boring around here. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on when you've got five kids all on lockdown e-learning, um, which is its yeah. own special kind of hell. And um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> right there with you, dude. <laughs> so, Me too. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kept busy, but I'll tell you, I saw a lot of friends, uh, a lot of, a lot of fellow, you know, artists and peers really, really having a tough yeah. go of it. Um, we're lucky. I live in Colorado Springs or near Colorado Springs. I'm about an hour and 20 minutes away from Denver. And, um, yeah. and there's a lot of support in Denver. There's a lot of entities there that were really helping artists and um, gave me a chance to back off, let those things happen. A couple of things came up and, you know, you just seize a moment, but um, these are the moments I think where uh, I'm grateful that I've been working and building for so long because you can, you can live off your reputation a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, when things like this happen. So, yeah. so that's been a big help too. Nice. 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 Well, that's good to hear. It's staying active. Awesome. Awesome. Um, hey, Parker. Parker. Yes. <laughs> what did you Parker's do? Been up, <laughs> Parker's been on, the, been on the show before. So there's no reason why if I ask this question of him, what did he do to go uh, to keep from going crazy? There's no reason why he would not have an answer. So Parker. Well, I was on the Business one night. Um, you know, for me, um, things have been, you know, have been kind of rough for mm -hmm. me up, up leading to the, uh, to, to the lockdown. So once that happened, it was like, okay, I don't have to drive any kids anywhere. Now, now I'm, <laughs> now I'm working. So, um, uh, so that was, that was, it was almost a, a blessing, you know, <clears throat> in disguise being able to get things done and do do crazy stuff um <clears throat> last time we were here I, you know i talked about um that project with greg lee um yes. that uh was really fun to have um alex Desair and greg lee in the studio uh for this this graphic novel that um that i've finished sort of that was supposed to come out in december but because of covid it's, it's got pushed and um and it was seriously the week before the lockdown. I had them in the studio. We were able to to get the music uh, tracks um, squared away, um, which was which was great. But then, um, uh, yeah. So so now, right now, like as as we speak, and I, I need to stop doing it. I'm <laughs> like I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to fix some some things for the graphic novel <clears throat> to be put out. So I've been giving some more time to oh, work nice. on that. Um, so, um, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, we started with, uh, this erase COVID, um, series of posters uh -huh. that, uh, I don't know, I, uh, a bunch of artists were involved in, um, and, uh, uh, and that was kind of a cool, cool benefit kind of thing for, for artists and for something to help, <laughs> to help that thing. I don't know. I've been doing all sorts of goofy <laughs> stuff. Um, I got this, um, this, uh, this just came in the mail today. It's a, it's, a, a card game for, for little kids okay. uh, called knock, knock first words. It's kind of a cool, cool thing that, uh, is going to be coming out. Um, it's kind of more my, uh, yo Gabba Gabba set, you know, I keep myself busy. And of course there was Santa on a panda. I share. I talked to you guys about that a little bit. Here, I'll share it right here. Uh, He's going to do it. He's going to grab it. Total ridiculous <laughs> idea that was like, okay, let's do it. So yeah, it was just a dumb, dumb rhyme. Like it was a joke. Like what's better than Elf on a Shelf? Sit on a panda. <laughs> so we were trying to take it out. So it is magnetically <laughs> attached, and it comes with a book, and it came with a seven-inch uh, song, and we did a B-side. Um, so it was like a musical project and uh 
and, a, and an artistic book project. And I don't know, hopefully, hopefully uh, this year it'll, it'll be a thing. Uh, you know, we didn't do so good, but you know, nobody did so yeah. good, right? Um, that I'm friends with. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, for, um, for you, I, I know that uh, not every artist in the world is looking for, uh, for a, <laughs> a job uh in the in the respects that you you have right so you have a, a design position that puts you in in uh tv and in and entertainment and that sort of thing and some artists are looking for you know i'm going to do a political piece or i'm going to do something that <laughs> that is a mural uh or a, a street art piece um if a, if someone was really like like let's say let's say i reached out to you parker and i was like hey how do i get my foot in the door uh is there a, is there a method or 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 a way that you think the artists can kind of walk through and and be introduced to the right people or 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 get their art out you know i sure would I wish I had a, a good answer for that. Anybody that is does this kind of stuff is, I don't know. Everybody has a different way of getting there. And it's it still goes back to the same punk rock, do it yourself roots kind of a thing. I mean, and yeah. that, you know, we were like with the Aquabats, it was like we grew up kind of in the in the in the industry and in the music industry and in the design industry. And we're like, we're gonna make our own TV show along with our band. Speaking, and, uh, which is speaking of crazy. which. But, <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of which, you were a child star at some point. Star? Yeah, that's, a, that's a loosely used term. Wait, 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 yeah, wait. I, I was in the, What? What's the com? Were you on? I was on a what, what was it? What was it? A couple of them. I don't know. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, my family was an acting family uh, growing up that's in, cool. in North Hollywood, and and it was it was like. Um, I I have a lot of a lot of cool stories with a lot of you know Hollywood people yeah. or whatever, but um, but it wasn't like we ever did it to um, to be famous or to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like to support our family. And to, yeah, <laughs> really, and that's what we did. Like we just did it to, to support our family, and and uh, um, I don't know, a lot of lot of cool a lot of cool stories For I sure. could tell you uh, growing up. Uh, for sure in the for 80s sure. with <laughs> and stuff like that. yeah i just uh, uh the reason why i bring yeah. it up is is, is it did four episodes of the wonder years yeah i did, <laughs> I, did I did more but the, but my parts got ended up on some kind uh, of floor and uh, uh, some other episodes yeah weren't you in a, a silver spoon uh, once you were uh, you were fighting my her. brother tyler oh, okay, tyler okay. was in silver spoons and, and my older sister rachel was was on that show but see that's, that's awesome. we were kind of like you know, I, we, we did commercials and did TV stuff, and, and uh, we were more like, yeah, yeah okay, you, you get famous, good, good for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> good, luck, good luck with that implosion when you're older, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like we, so we kind of saw that coming, we, we did, but uh, um, it was kind of like, you know, uh, we had something that we could share and, and have fun with it, and it was, it was, it was a blast um, doing it and acting and all that stuff. But um, which has kind of led into you know the musical career and the TV career and all that all that yeah. weird stuff. Cool. Um, but it is just it's the same thing. It's the same thing as what we're doing as artists. Yeah. It's just it's just sharing what we got, yeah. sharing what's inside of us. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. So. Uh, I know that uh, that uh, Kyle, uh, it, you know Kyle, you're you're doing a lot of like punk art and street art now, um, and. Uh, and like and like he was saying, you know, it seems that everybody kind of gets to the point uh, of notoriety uh, through their own channel, right? You know, yeah. Um, it is kind of part of who you know and where you came from, but it's also part of like uh, evocative statements that people can uh, can can pull from your artwork. You know, something that that resonates with them. Uh, what do you think was um, uh, for you, what was the art piece that you did that you thought had the most uh, emotional response? Like uh, for me personally, or for yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, I, I know you've seen you've you've participated with other artists and stuff, but uh, I you know as a I, long before I was a musician, I was a visual artist, right? So I did mm -hmm. a lot. I, I, in fact, I have like boxes of you know, crap from when I was uh, maybe 14 years old all the way to like, you know, mid twenties. And, um, and I thought, I thought, I, I thought my stuff was decent, was decent. Uh, but I knew that a couple of pieces like were real bangers, like people just really 
liked it. I didn't know why, but because uh, they were all kind of my children as, as far as art goes. Um, but do you do, have you ever felt that one one piece sticks out as like a, a definition piece or or? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's one that I've I've drawn multiple multiple times, and I did a big uh, stencil piece of it. It's a uh, like a, a bald white guy with a, an American flag over his eyes and a cross mm. over his mouth. Um, that one, I think, it, there's there's a lot that people can pull from it. It usually um, has a lot of uh, a lot of people a lot of people ask a lot of questions about it, or it really drives a conversation. Yeah, um, which I, I think is always like a really great thing around art is that when it's not necessarily super clear um and it gets people to think and to talk even amongst themselves yeah. or to ask the artist um i did i did do a few years ago i did a black lives matter piece that i was particularly proud of it's like a young uh black man that's uh wearing sunglasses and in the reflection of his sunglasses there's um the washington monument and an american flag mm -hmm. and then i just did a bunch of blood dripping down from the top yeah, of the canvas yeah. um and I thought that was that was one that I, I particularly was very proud of just because I thought that it was representative of, of like how yeah. awful it can be to be a young black man or a young person of color in this country. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, uh, you know, uh, Greg, um, I've looked at your stuff online and and it's really evocative, um, especially uh, I, I know you do a lot of the um, you do. A, there's a lot of photos of you with the the simple handprint on the face, and that's really um, that's really stunning uh, in in a visual sense. Uh, now you, you're from uh, the Paiute tribe in Pyramid Lake, uh, and that's that's kind of added to the the concepts or the elements that that you pull from. Um, what's uh, what what do you think is the most um, the most evocative piece you've done, or maybe even the 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 one that has the most, um, you know, that garners the most uh, interest from people. Um, you do Gosh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm um, I'm a fan of not pulling punches and hurting feelings, yeah. and so I, I tend to. It all tends to, on some level, be evocative, I guess, and. Um, it's also, I don't know, it's also interesting because, you know, as, as an indigenous person or as a person of color, even, um, we're in an interesting space where people are actually kind of listening, or at least half the country yeah. seems to be kind of trying to listen. And, uh, but it also is like, like, if I share my own experience, because I, I, I'm not an indigenous artist, I claim to be, you know, an yeah. artist that just happens to be native and I speak through you know, my, my sort of human experience. And, uh, and so if I say something, you know, and, and it's part of my story, is that my effort to be an activist? Um, or am I just sharing a story or is it yeah. both? And so I get pigeonholed into places of being like an artist and activist. And I kind of maintain that what one person calls an activist, another might call an adult. Yeah with an opinion and uh you know it really just comes down to like who has a microphone or who has the paintbrush or however you want to however you want to say that um but the work is you know more than anything it's meant to be it's meant to be true it's meant to be real um from from my perspective um i don't speak for native people yeah. as a whole i i speak for myself yeah. um and i recognize that 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 um people identify with that or that they might gravitate towards that and, and they might use that as sort of their, um, the, their experience because yeah. there's a shared experience, but, um, but I'm not, that, that's not my goal. Um, within the works that I use, I mean, I'm doing street art. Uh, the mural that you mentioned before is like 77 feet tall. It's like massive. And, uh, and I do a lot of design work. I do a lot of post work. I do a lot of illustrative work. Um, all of which is really just in this space, but I also do a lot of performance work, which is kind of how I made my bones as an artist living in Washington, DC uh, for almost 17 years um, before I moved to Colorado uh, about five plus years ago. And um, performance art, uh, you know, I had a, a good friend of mine um, and, and mentor who is a, a well-known indigenous performance artist. His name is James uh -huh. Luna. Uh -huh. And, um, he said, you know, performance art is really important for indigenous people because it allows us to control the narrative in yeah. real time, as opposed to hanging a painting on the wall and walking away from it. And people are going to bring, you know, whatever their understanding yeah. or misunderstandings to the, to the table. 
Um, whereas performance art, I can change it on a dime. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not beholden to a script per se. I can kind of do whatever. Um, and so part of the tools that I use for performance art, if I'm dressed a certain way is using like a handprint on my face uh, or which, which I think can be, um, a, uh, it can kind of evoke uh, like a silence, you know, that native people are being silenced. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's also, it's also has like a practical, uh, a practical aspect to it. If I have a handprint on my face and makeup and I'm wearing sunglasses, I'm about, you know, six foot four. And, you know, if I'm wearing a headdress, like I was for my very first performance piece, I'm over seven feet yeah. tall, you know, with a headdress. Um, yeah. these things actually keep people away from me. They, they give me a wide berth. And, uh, and so, um, so there's a practical purpose for those things too. Um, but you know, all in all, my work, I think, is about uh, contemporary indigenous existence and the fact that uh, that we like the same things everybody else does. I mean, the, the mural, um, this shirt, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually the source image for the mural, um, the reason why my daughter's wearing, and that's right. who it is, uh, is wearing an interrupter shirt because yeah. that's her favorite band that I got to introduce her to. Yeah. And so it's this idea that she can be indigenous and she can have her identity, but she also likes this like yeah. punk ska band, you know, and like there's this intersection of our existence because we're indigenous, but we're also having an American experience like everybody else. And so sure. I'm interested in, in illustrating those things because I think it's actually interesting yeah. and it humanizes us at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, the show, the show, uh, uh, pulls in a lot of a uh, lot of ska artists or or uh, uh, musicians, and um, we don't want to. I, I don't want to ever uh, uh, discredit anybody for playing whatever style of music, but I will say that that ska um, is one of the style of mu musics that you can you can see a, a direct lineage or, or a lineage mm. of. It, it was it was uh, Jamaicans being influenced by American music. Then the Jamaicans influencing british and then the mm -hmm. british re-influencing -in americans and americans going what <laughs> where did this come from it came from you, <laughs> you know? yeah so, i so was i was a hardcore kid back in the day and so i grew up in salt lake or i grew up in park city utah but salt lake city had like a big straight edge scene so hardcore was a whole big thing and i dated this girl this nice girl that was like super into ska and she introduced it to me and i was like uh, I like really and uh, and then but she introduced me to uh, you know Operation Ivy the Mighty Mighty Boston's these are these are things that bridge the gap for me and then I found the Scatolites and I found Hepcat and I found you know so so I would consider myself more on the punk end of things but there's absolutely some ska language in there. I mean you can't listen to the clash and not have some sort of affinity towards the roots yeah. of ska and be able to get make it to the specials and to the scatolites and to you know all of these other different things that are just freaking magnificent there's just yeah. so good <laughs> for sure for sure yeah i always like the the ska uh, or not the ska but the uh, the clash had a really great uh, concept of art their their artist was very uh, line art oriented and uh, i i see that as an influence in duke's work uh, duke you, you, do you do you uh, do you do you ever think about the clash and what the clash meant to art you know, they, uh -huh. I, I've seen a lot of their stuff just, you know, um, and I just loved it because it was a really gritty, posterized, you know, just very, it, it, to me, it actually led me toward a lot of old Russian art, which actually heavily influenced me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it just, I don't know, you know, I just, I took, at developing my style, I took things in from yeah. everywhere, and that was one of my that was one of my uh, brain, you know. Yeah, I think I think that was one of the from things, from you know. your from your artwork. I get uh, I get a definite sense of uh, of uh, um, uh, this is going to sound strange, but communistic art. So the yeah. so the Soviet yeah. the Soviet communistic line art, you know, hard lines and hard uh, uh, stars and 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 faces and and energy from humans in that line format that's what i get from from your artwork and i think that's why um uh it has deeper resonance for people that that do pick up your uh posters flyers album arts uh and and items that you're doing uh is because they 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 see what's on the on the surface now what's on the surface is like you know you've taken a picture and you've drawn lines over it and then you 
draw some stuff. But underneath it, there's an intent. There's a there's a deeper, richer, uh, historic feel to to that art, and I think that really shines through. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No problem. <laughs> wow! Somebody interpreted my art. It's crazy. <laughs> You're like, no, I was, I no, was just I, a doodle. I, <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, um, I really wanted to, when I started doing it, I really wanted to pull those elements into into my art uh, and just make something that people in the, in the San Diego scene or the L.A. scene really had something to collect. They wanted to, like, they wanted something for them to be like, Okay, that's cool. You know, at, in San Diego, uh, Skank Out Productions was a lot of the ones. Who, uh, you, I yeah, mean, yeah, Augie yeah. and, and Reggie and all those guys. You remember yeah, them? Yeah. Uh, they had they just gave me free run. They gave me like, okay, we want this image, and then I I did it in my style. But it, the the reason I did it, you know, um, to uh, get yeah. kind of make a name for them uh, with the artwork. But also, they just did these digital prints that were amazing and just blew them out for like two bucks a piece. So, like for almost no money, you could have a piece of the show just right there that that was just very striking, you know. So that, I thought that was really cool that they did that, you know. Absolutely, Absolutely. that's cool. Hey, uh, Brian, what's uh, what's happening in the feed? Uh, we got anything cool happening in the feed? Oh uh, no! Just to let the uh, the the audience is listening. Hi. No, please, uh, please write any uh, uh, questions that you have in the feed, uh, and then we'll read them out, and uh, you'll get the uh, direct answer right from the the source, the mouth, the mouth of the horse. This, uh, it's actually funny that you brought up the mm -hmm. uh, the communistic art. Um, sorry to interrupt, uh, but the new thing mm -hmm. I'm working on for John, the smoke and mirrors, it's completely Russian propaganda art. Oh, like nice. I, I've actually taken like silhouettes of the guys and sort of recreated them in that style i don't know is john in the queue can can i show some of this is, uh yeah yeah john, yeah, john are you it, out there it, john Roy? <laughs> is john in the queue john are you in the queue john roy john roy i don't know he's not saying right, anything well, well i'm gonna the queue. i'm gonna take a chance and show part of it yeah, then just, just so <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. So it's very, uh, it's very Russian yeah. propaganda. Um, very, very. Uh, yeah. So we really. Um, it's honestly, it's one of the best projects I've heard in a long, long, long time. It's got so many different uh, artists yeah. from so many different bands from all over the country, and then it's he. You know, he's like, this is what it's called. I'm not. I'm not going to re-release the name yet. That's up to him. Yeah. But this is what it's called, and immediately, like, this image popped in my head, yeah. and I'm like, perfect. Now I just got to finish it. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. So ask ask the other guys questions because I'm working on it. Click, 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 click. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, well, hey, uh, did uh, uh you, you know, um, jeez. I'm thinking of uh, of of this last year and how much it's affected me and how much uh, I get into like uh, uh, I get into like little bouts of like super creativity. I want to I want to play guitar. I want to do this. I want to do that. Uh, and then I get into like uh, a wall that I hit where like the news is just saturated my head uh, with with all this propaganda and stuff that's that's coming out like super. Uh, at blinding at blinding speed and uh i, I find that i hit um like a like writer's block or 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 you know block a block of some sort uh what do you guys do to to break those blocks i mean does anybody have like a specific thing they do i force myself to draw you yeah force. i just i mean i literally i'm just like I, you know it, I, I, i'm a, I'm a bit of a night owl so i usually stay up late uh -huh. and that's when i do my work uh -huh. um and it'll be just you know it's like it doesn't matter what you're drawing if it's just a fish or a phone or whatever just do it just put something out there and get going yeah and, yeah. and then you see what comes up from it from there okay cool 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 yeah yeah what, what do you do Parker? Well, you know well, I, same thing, I guess. Uh, or, or I'll switch gears and like pick up a ukulele or something, <laughs> something AD, ADD wise. But, but yeah, um, I, I do this thing called um, uh, 
this is your daily doodle that I that I put yeah. on, on the internet and and it's kind of yeah. kind of flooded my Instagram, which I think is kind of sad because it doesn't really. I don't get to highlight my like my actual work that I do, yeah. but it's usually napkin doodles or something while I'm on the phone, you know, do, doodling something. But that that forces me that I know I've got to post a daily doodle every day. It, it, it forces me to to keep my creative juices flowing. It's just like if I'm working on one thing and I've hit that wall, I can just totally think about something totally dumb and just grab a you know colored pencils or whatever yeah. and uh, and and do that. So yeah. <laughs> Totally. You just <laughs> got to keep yourself, uh, your creative juices going sure. Sure. in the out, in the output. You know, sometimes we, we get uh, bogged down by the input, like, um, especially yeah, bad news or, you know, stuff that bums you out and you're like, yeah, ah, yeah. somebody posts something on Facebook and you want to punch them and you know, and then you're like, ah, oh, I'll just, uh, I got to output. Yeah. I got to do more output. Yeah, for, me, for me, it's like it's like I write lyrics and it's like you know, and then and then I, I hate the president and I hate this and I hate that <laughs> and I hate that and I hate that and I'm like, the, a this is uh, this is good to get my uh, feelings out, but uh, it's also good to crumble that and throw it over my shoulder yeah. and then say, is there anything left on my plate? Uh, and that's that's kind of a hard process for me. Um, uh, uh, for when I was doing visual art, uh, it wasn't, it didn't seem to be that much of a block. Like I, I could always find something interesting, right? Uh, my favorite thing was, uh, was going through, uh, National Geographic's to look at like the, uh, cause they always had like really interesting photographs. Of but, like uh, naked women from uh, Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but me no, too, no, like, you know, a picture of like a, a picture of some like lion in a bush, you know, uh, and not talking about naked women. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, and you would you would just uh, you know you, uh, there was always something to sketch, always something that was uh, that was interesting out there visually. Mm -hmm. That even if it's not your art or your concept to begin with, to just redraw it to get the juices flowing. That was uh, uh, what I did when when I was doing a lot of uh, a lot of visual art. Um, and then I think um, somewhere along the line, I, I learned how to do all this drafting online with the desktop publishing and making sure that it like, you know, uh, that, that uh, I had uh, uh, um, the whole concept of uh, vector art versus JPEG versus blah, 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 blah. Okay. And uh, I got so into that that like my, my desire to like draw uh, kind of fell to the wayside. I, I became I became more. I guess business oriented or, or nuts and bolts oriented than uh, than uh, interested in the art expression and medium itself. Um, so I, I'm always interested in finding out what people uh, uh, what people do or or to keep themselves in that zone. You you, you just threw out so many different things there, but like yeah. you know one one of the most the, the best uh, piece of advice I learned when I was studying Adobe Illustrator too many years ago was that to use Adobe Illustrator as a tool and not a crutch. Yeah. Like, oh, I have to do this. I, I, I have to do this style. And sometimes when I'll do something, uh, you know, uh, digitally, it'll look one way, but then, it, but then your hand has a memory. Your hand has a different way yeah. of doing things, just like a muscle, you know, like uh, a, of just like if you're a musician, you know, there's certain things that you you've learned, you've learned the chords. Um, you don't even have to think about it, you yeah. know, and same thing with, with when you're drawing. So sometimes just mixing it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go back to, go back to, to your piece of paper and a pen and then, and then go back to, you know, Photoshop or Illustrator. Yeah. Or procreate. Yeah. Kind of, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess a couple mediums there. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Greg, are you working on anything right now that you're like, this is, this is, uh, this is going to be super awesome. Like do you have a, do you have like a, uh, maybe a small piece you could show us? Yeah. Um, I actually, um, I've been working on this now for a couple of years, but I haven't shown it like it's on my Instagram, but I haven't actually shown it like publicly or anything. And so I have, uh, some shows hopefully coming up either the end of this year or next year. Um, that will do it. Um, so it's a series I called the others and, um, I'm essentially reappropriating old comic book images from the forties and fifties that represent natives and I'm redrawing them and repurposing them. <clears throat> and then, um, and then I've changed the lyrics or the, the dialogue to actually be lyrics from 
punk song. Okay, so cool. um, this is Last Caress uh, from the Misfits. <laughs> yeah. uh, it says, I got something to say. I killed your baby today. It doesn't matter much to me as long as it's dead. But the Indians, like, you know, choking him out. Uh, sweet, lovely death. I'm waiting for your breath. Come sweet death. One last caress. So I'm, I'm trying to take uh, some of these like lyrics that are that sound familiar to like indigenous struggle yeah, and yeah, just yeah, yeah. adding them in into this. Uh, this is Stiff Little Fingers. It says uh, they take away our freedom. Uh, suspect device. Uh, they take away our freedom from the name of liberty. Why can't they just clear off? Why can't they let us be? They make us feel indebted for saving us from hell. And then they put us through it. It's time the bastards That's fell. Cool. And, um, nice. and so I have these series of things that I've been, and I, they exist in paintings too. So these ones are brand new. I just did these on Friday. Um, I was thinking about uh, anti-maskers and, you know, all the mess that's yeah. going on right now. Um, January being like the longest year of uh, 2021. And, uh, and, um, and I actually, usually I do lyrics. I have a whole bunch of these, um, but this time I actually uh, did the, um, I had uh, the album title, uh, the compilation album that came out in 1987 from the dead Kennedys. Um, so it just says, uh, give me convenience or oh, give wow. me death. And, uh, yeah, so I have, uh, that one. And I actually did a, like a, I did another one. That's just like a kind of monochromatic and, and, you know, with the paintings, I actually put shapes and things in the back that, um, that actually are, are like, uh, textiles from my tribe that I've sort of incorporated into my work. Oh, and, nice. um, yeah, so I have, you know, I can do so cool. different paintings and stuff and then just like, I'm either painting them by hands. I've like, I have a laser cutter. So sometimes I'll do, uh, I'll do laser cuts and do like stencils and stuff. Um, but what's cool about these, you know, and, and sort of following, um, uh, the posters that we were just talking about, uh, Duke, is that uh, right? Duke. Did I say that right? Um, yeah. yeah. Sir. And, and sort of that, that sort of <clears throat> propagandist, um, cause I'm looking at Russian, Chinese and Cuban propagandist art and just doing, you know, simple color schemes. And so that's informed a lot of this work, but then I have this damn book that I've had for years and it's called, uh, white Indian. It's exactly what you think uh -huh. it is. It's, it's by Frank Franzetta, who originally uh, drew the um, Conan the Barbarian, but his most popular series, most longest running series is called White Indian. And it's about this white dude that's like more Indian than the most Indian that was ever Indian. <laughs> so it's like super problematic, which is this weird trope that exists where like Kevin Costner is like a better Indian than any yeah. of the other natives or, you know, Daniel day Lewis can run faster, you know, than, than any native and shoot more straight, you know? And, and so um, those are where I got those illustrations from. And it, it's exciting because I've been able to redo drawings that I did in high school. Cause I was really into comic books and stuff <laughs> in high school. Yeah. And, um, yeah. but then also infuse all these other elements that are personal to me as a journey. And then also just looking at, you know, trying to beef up my record collection you asked what i've been doing uh over you know co i've been buying records like basically <laughs> i've been i've been i've been uh uh following lars uh frederickson's uh posts and buying records from from lars frederickson from the rancid so <laughs> that's what i've been doing but all of it's just like you know i'm 45 so you know when we're we're, we're having either a midlife crisis or or not and like my midlife crisis is you know buying records, sharing them with my kids and, you know, incorporating them now, incorporating them to my work, which is, which is a lot of fun. So. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, so of the artists in this room, uh, uh, everybody's in the band, I think, right. Or Duke, are you in the band? No. Um, I, um, I quit, uh, playing cause the, I started getting arthritis, mm. um, about, I don't know, five years ago or so, maybe six. Um, just because my hands hurt all the time, which is fun when you're an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I pretty because I played congas for so long. I mean, it just nah, like it, yeah. gnarled up my hands and then. What? So, um, but yeah, I was in the I was in the highlights. I was in the amalgamated. Okay, okay. Um, I did various other things. Set in for you know backup for some people. But yeah, I haven't been. I haven't played music in quite a while. I totally remember you back in the it's scene, sad. back in the day, seeing you at shows and stuff. Um, I don't know, L.A. Yeah, you shows, look familiar too. I mean, stuff. it's it's yeah. Totally. I, 
I, I remember you. I remember meeting you way back then. So it's cool to like have a this conversation here with everybody. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I'm glad you remember because I don't remember a lot from those days. <laughs> <Me neither. What? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you recall the uh, one? On did the I have a drink in my hand? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a uh, this is a very interesting conversation for us because usually we have uh, uh, usually we take the rock and roll route. So we got these guys with, that not only are playing music actively, but but they have all these like backstage stories. And I'm I'm just thinking about like you guys. I'm like, well, how can we get more into the artwork? How do I get? Oh, these guys probably have backstage stories. Sure. <laughs> all right, let's do a round of backstage stories. Uh, let's start with. Uh, Let's start with uh, Kai Kai Kyle. Uh, uh, give me your page. give me your give me your funnest, rowdiest, craziest, drunkenness, uh, uh, coolest backstage story. I don't know if I, it's necessarily a backstage story, but the the most rowdy there was. Um, I played a bar that was like one of the grossest bars I've ever been into. It was in Redwood City, and um, like. I, I, I honestly can't remember the name of it. I was just thinking about it because I was trying to think of the name. Um, and there had been a few stories I'd heard about the place before, and it sounded kind of crappy anyway, and I didn't know why we were playing there. Um, and there was a dude who, and like was, this was totally unknown to me at the time, uh, he was on a date with a girl I dated in high school. And she had seen me and mentioned that we dated in high school, so he took it upon himself to uh, knock me over the pool table. Oof. For like no reason <laughs> and it was and like i mean it was specifically very aggressive and it was like he did it on purpose and then the time, or were you it was just like walking around yeah it was before <laughs> our set so um and i, I mean it hurt like I, you know i went down hard i was kind of standing at the the corner of the table so i like went up on top of it and then down oh. on the other side and then he went he went to kind of grab me to like like it seemed like he was gonna go to help me up but i was like nah man like i'm gonna get myself up and he he did a lot of yelling and uh calling me a fag for not wanting to get mm. thrown onto the floor yeah um and then i found out the next day my the my ex-girlfriend from high school hit me up and was like hey like i don't know if you saw me there or anything but that guy was crazy and i mentioned that and he kind of lost it and so i she's like i saw that and i left i hope yeah. you're okay wow so. wow she's She's making good choices in her life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's not, you know, she's not her, good to that dude her, now, right? Her watch, her watching the dude like knock Kyle over and being like, "Nope, I'm peace and fuck out of here." Yeah, uh, was kind of a yeah. smart choice. There, 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 you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Retrospect, uh, she made a good choice afterwards. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Duke, what's uh, what's your, your craziest uh, craziest backstage story? Oh Jesus. Um... Skip me. Go to somebody else. I gotta think. <laughs> He's like, I don't remember any of them. I got. I, 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 well, oh, I can. I, I can tell you what led up to the. Uh, I can. Oh, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say I got a good one if you need a minute. <laughs> go. <t> Actually, <laughs> I just thought of something. I, you, Give us a good story. You want to hear the night that that broke the highlights up? Uh, sure. No. Uh, only if you want to tell it, I, you know, I never, I never uh, uh, force people to uh, to tell the stories that might get them in trouble. <laughs> no, I don't care. Well, uh, so we we were playing, and I think it was uh, uh, Houston or no, was it? What's the one with? Yeah, Houston. We were playing in Houston uh, with the uh, with uh, uh, Ryan Scroggins mm -hmm. and those boys. And so we're uh, we're having an interview at the end of the day, and and so James was always like, we have to be professional, we have to do this, and so you get a bunch of rowdy drunks in there with one guy with a problem with all of it, something's gonna go wrong. So we got the we got the so a couple songs played, and we got the website and the MySpace out there. This before yeah. Facebook, <laughs> and um, and then all of a sudden, like somebody drops a line from uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody dropped a line from uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force and the entire band just exploded into laughter and started quoting that and, <laughs> and it really like it was a fun time The every, we got call-ins the host was cracking up, the whole band was having fun, and he's in the corner just fuming 
<laughs> and then the next day he's like, that was horrible. That was the worst. That was the worst radio interview ever. I can't believe you guys are that unprofessional. What do I do with you guys? And I'm sitting there at the time I was working in radio and he's like, I'm like, you sure that was bad radio, dude? He's like, yeah, it was horrible. Worst, worst interview ever. I'm like, that was probably the best interview that guy's ever seen. I think, uh, I think you got to chill out, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Then four, four days later, when we get off tour, he writes this like two-page long letter saying how he's gonna take, he's gonna take control of the band. It sounded like a dictator, man. It was hilarious. That's the worst. That's the worst. <laughs> this is That's my worst. band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, exactly like that. <laughs> Brian, you were gonna say something. Uh, yeah, it's it's not really like a. Uh, it's not really a backstage story. It's kind of a, a what we made into our backstage story. Um, it was uh, when we were out on that very first tour that we did, like all the booking through MySpace. When MySpace was just like a yeah. fresh thing, and we had we, we had a just a fantastic tour. It was amazing. We were showing up to, to, to towns, and we had like pre-made like posters and sent them to all the clubs. And we were showing up to towns, and they had sent street teams out to like put posters up and. And it was like right after Cruel Tutelage came out, so it was really easy to see the posters. It's like nice old like right, right. The, yeah. the Chinese monkey and gold and everything. And we rolled in, into um, Telluride, Colorado, and we saw no posters. And we rolled up to the club, and I know. the club is closed. And like you know, Kurt goes out into town and ends up like coming across the the assistant manager of the bar. And the assistant manager's like, oh, yeah, no, the club's closed for renovations for six months. The owner's in Italy. There's no show tonight. <laughs> so Kurt comes back to the band, and he tells us this. So Micah, the drummer, Dustin, the keyboard player, and myself, like, go to the liquor store, get a bottle of Crown, like, each. Go back to the van and, like, create, create our own, like, little back room. And we were sitting like... We're like we're like drinking our crown and we got our like Pepsi's and our like you know little like twelve pack of beer and we're just like we're just crud we got no show we got nothing we got nowhere to stay we have no 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 mind you this is about twelve <laughs> noon <laughs> when they start pounding <laughs> 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 <alcohol, like> it's, <laughs> like it's going out of style <laughs> and like and like Kurt and Dan and Donnell they like look at us and we're just like we're cool we're just gonna smoke joints and drink whiskey in the van <laughs> we got our back room don't worry about us. And they leave. And at some point in time, we finally, like, stop drinking the whiskey in the van. We're like, man, we need some food. So we, like, kind of stumble through town, find this pizza joint, sit down, like, order, like, two or three large pizzas, eat the whole thing, drink, like, five pitchers of beer. And we, like, finish the last sip of beer and, like, the last bite of pizza. And Kurt comes, like, bounding into the pizza place. It's like, hey, guys. And we're like, hey, dude. He's all like, I found us a show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, 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 like, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> so, so, so I, I've been the guy that, that can make a show happen out of nothing. Uh, uh, and, <laughs> And when we got there and the, the show was pulled on us, I was so mad. And uh, the, the other thing that was, uh, was a, a big game changer was that there was a huge bicycle conference, right? Because Telluride's on the top of this mountain, right, with a beautiful waterfall at the end of the, the town. And like 700 cyclists had, had achieved this mountaintop trip and were camping at the end of town. So there was only two bars that were open and the one bar uh i went to and they were like you know no way no way you, you guys can't play and i went to another bar and said hey can we play and they said well we have uh, some noise ordinance issues but there's a lot of people that, in town if you can play uh we can't pay you any money but we can give you uh, uh beer right so that was the that was the deal so i get these guys i tap these guys on the shoulder and they're like gone Where they're like what what <laughs> Pink and porky and pouring oh. sweat, and it's only like sixty degrees outside. Yeah, these guys are these <laughs> guys are, are 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 sweaty. And <laughs> and uh, I set this thing up, and uh, we play, and uh, right, you know, first note. We're about to hit first note, and I go outside, and there's literally a thousand person line going up the block around the corner around another corner down an alleyway and i'm like holy crap and this is a tiny bar tiny bar uh so we go in there we play 
there's a lot of sound problems, but we keep playing and we keep playing. And this oh, old God. lady comes up out of nowhere. This old lady comes up out of nowhere. She's just like maybe like 76 years old. She walks up to us. She's like a little frail, frail woman. She goes, I hope they're paying you a lot. You guys are fucking great. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, no, actually, we're not getting paid. She's like, what? And she literally disappears and then comes back and she's got a giant milk pail bucket. And she's running from person to person in the crowd as they're dancing and going, put some money in the damn bucket. The band needs money. Why aren't you giving money to the band? <laughs> so, and so at the end of the day, they get the the club gave us like a 48 bottle box of beer just a gigantic box of beer and, well, and they and they kicked us a couple uh, no they didn't no money no money okay. not okay. not not a dime but she gave us like 350 dollars <laughs> for a free <laughs> gift <Wow. laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the yeah. post show backstage was our keyboard player uh, just losing everything that he had consumed through the day uh, in, in the alleyway. And you just hear, you hear like window after window being slammed shut of all the apartments all up and down the house. <laughs> he is just, he is not quiet. <laughs> just, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, believe, I believe at that time we called that process uh, calling dinosaurs. Yes, that is when. We came up with calling dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's switch gears here. Uh, we're 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 near the end of the hour here. Let's do this. Um, let's uh, let's ask the lo- the final question of the day, which is uh, um, we'll do we'll we'll do a lightning round here. Uh, what do you think that you can do? And that um, that that other artists can do to generate interest in art and uh, get art uh, to be more um, more appreciated by society when the COVID lockdown is removed. So so are there ways that you can think of as an artist, uh, be they online promotion ways be they putting money towards a towards an entity like a safe space for arts or um or going to schools and talking i mean i'm open to any suggestions it's this is more of a more of a healing process for me because i get to hear all these like ideas i'm like yeah yeah yeah, that's a good idea so so let's uh Let's do a round. Uh, uh, Kyle, what's, uh, do, you, do you have any ideas of how to uh, bring art to the masses and how to, how to bring more interest to art uh, in this time uh, uh, going forward into 2021? Cut off people's eyelids so they have to look at it? I, I really have no idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. That's a good one. <laughs> I usually just go for the old school like toothpicks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you what do you think, uh, uh, Duke? Shoot, you know I actually like I actually like on my Instagram. I don't do it that much because I need to contact other artists. But I like to because I do a lot of art shows, and so um, I like to just have my fans look at the other artists that I'm in group shows with, and it just supports, and it comes back in through this way, and then people start asking, you know, like like what's up, yeah. you know, so it. I like to spread it out so it comes back in, you know? Nice, nice. Digital. Yeah, grouping cool. with other artists and, and, uh, and communal response. That's, that's good. Always good for, uh, good for getting the ball rolling. Uh, uh, Parker, what do, you, what do you think? What's your... I have no idea. I'm still stumped on trying to come up with an answer for my backstage story. <laughs> with, the, with, with Google 13 and the Aquabats? Come on, man. All right. We were like that, right. man. All right, all right. Let's go back to the set backstage. You got something? No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying we were, we were that band like on, you know, where all the other bands would be like, oh, hey, here, there's beer on your bus because 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 nobody drank in our yeah. band. You know what I mean? Like on a warp tour, they would always give us stuff. Anyways, <laughs> we did have people drink it. Some people drank in our band, but but but, you know, when you had so many people. I was just thinking about that was like the only time we got to meet our like our punk rock idols where they're like, oh, there's beer over here. <laughs> like, 
the longest of all stars would come and try to like trade water for 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 our beer and we're like yeah sure yeah, yeah, oh gosh yeah. But, uh, yeah opie opie would would come totally drunk on our beer on our on our bus and uh super scary it looked like he was gonna punch you you know what i mean and, and uh and and uh he, he saw like a, a gift basket somebody gave to us and and um and it was just he was like oh what is this stuff I'm like oh you can have some things just don't take don't take that that don't take this because it's important and he's like oh yeah and he takes it and leaves and but, uh, <laughs> anyways i got my point is i got nothing and, and as far as the, the answer for for getting more people into art i have no idea man my <laughs> I'm like, I draw cr cross-eyed cartoon well, animals. I'm, I don't know, man. I'm thinking of, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of like a self-destructive art, you know, like uh, uh, when uh, Banksy did that that photograph. Oh, yeah. Or that, that, that art, and then it yeah, automatically yeah. shredded right in front of the person that purchased it. That was oh, gangster. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was brilliant, though. Yeah. That was fucking brilliant. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, you know Banksy's such a uh, a secretive weird dude that he probably sold it to somebody that that actually just propped his own money up for it. So the so the person that was buying it probably knew about it, but the person that was curating it and showing it to look over and see it shred and then just see him just turn white like ah! <laughs> try to stop it. That was magic. That was magic. It was it was kind of a joke on that portion of the industry. <laughs> Uh man, Greg, 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 tell me, tell me, uh, first of all, uh, do you have a backstage story you want to share? I've never been in a band. I've always wanted to be in a band, but I've never been in a band. But I've been to so many shows. I got a great story about Rancid that tell it. is is current and or is uh is past and current. Um they were on tour in 1992 <laughs> with Bad Religion and Green Day on uh Bad Religion's tour. Um and we did what we always do. You know, you go early and you, you canoodle and you meet people and you get in. And so we were actually met uh, Billy Joe Armstrong and we were right. hanging out. And this is pre Dookie days. And, uh, and he was really nice. And, uh, and then he was like, you guys should go in because they were doing sound check. And so we go in and, and Rancid up, is up there. And we were there for Rancid because we were, we were big fans of, um, of Operation Ivy. And we'd heard about him doing this band and they had the basis from operation Ivy and we were just really stoked about it. And, and incidentally, they actually played a bunch of op Ivy songs, which was, which was super cool. Um, but they finish it and they're walking down and this is Tim Armstrong, you know, leather studs, you know, green Mohawk, oh, the yeah. whole nine. And, uh, <laughs> the guy I was with, um, was just like a, a, an Uber fan and he was a little younger than me, but not too much. And, uh, he was like, I'm going to go ask Tim for his autograph. And I was like, bro i'm like please don't don't do that like the whole punk ethos is like about consumption like you don't ask people for these things and and so he did anyways and tim stopped and he looked him up and down and he goes i guess if you're into that kind of thing and he signed it but my friend was crushed to just totally yeah. crushed and um i think it's hilarious because i mean i have a friend who saw uh, you know, that saw Johnny Rotten eating lunch in New York City and went up to him and he said, you know, uh, I really love your music and and he said fuck off. So I mean you you expect like some sort of response. Like yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's part respond. of the experience. Yeah. 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 So in uh 2019 I was in LA um at a show with this um organization called Muzak that provides music for under uh privileged uh, music programs throughout the United States. Um, and, uh, the guy who runs it, Donna Carey, um, has this backyard carnival thing, which some of you may have been to. Um, and so I would, I showed up with the, this punk series. We were going to auction off some art and, uh, and Tim was there. So this is the first time I'm seeing him since 1992. And I met him briefly then and, and I meet him and we're talking and he's just, the dude's a total sweetheart. And I tell him this story. Yeah. And he is crushed. Yeah. Like he just stops and he's like, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. and 
I felt like such a dick. Like I, I was relaying this story because it's like that experience and it's funny yeah. and it just like, like, I mean, Tim was like it, it, at that time and in that place, he was our American yeah. punk rocker, you know, he yeah. embodied it and, you know, but he brought up the point too, that, you know, a lot of people were really, um, struggling because things were blowing up yeah. and you had all these like sort of down home punk rock kids that didn't know how to handle it. And yeah. he, I think that's where he was at. And, um, and I felt <laughs> terrible uh, for telling him this. And then he came back and he puts his arm around me. If you've seen Tim now, he looks like a serial killer. Yeah, like, yeah, he's got yeah, the beard and the shape. Bald head, head, huge he's, yeah, sure. Sure. he's an intimidating <laughs> looking dude, but he's just the nicest guy. He's like, man, he's like, I'm really sorry. He came and apologized again. I'm like, damn it. I just like, that was such a, I did this stupid fanboy thing and it just bit me in the ass and I just felt absolutely horrible about it. Uh, but he did like, they came through town and he, he hooked me up with some backstage nice. classes. So I think, I think we're okay. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. He's uh, uh, I've ran into him only a couple times. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll concur. Like he is a sweetheart um, yeah. uh, for, for me, uh, the, you know, uh, imagine being a, a band and you're playing just a, you know, a crappy bar show uh, in Berkeley, and then in walks the 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 core of American punk rock, mm. and he looks at he stops, looks at you, and goes, "That amplifier, you got one of those?" And this is while I'm playing. I'm all yeah, and he's all, <laughs> "We got to talk afterwards." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So. So afterwards, I go upstairs because it's like super loud, and he follows me upstairs. I'm like, "Oh my god, this, he, he really wants to talk!" And so he's like, "Yeah, man, I had a, I had an ampeg and I sold it, and it was the stupidest thing I ever did. Like, I want it, but you know, if you're ever gonna sell that, tell me, blah 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 blah." And I said, uh, "Well, I'm not looking to sell it right now, but here's a CD, right? You know, I'm being Mister, you know, fucking here's a, here's a bit of merch, right? So I give him a CD, and then he he goes, "Oh, thanks." And then he's got the CD in his hand. He pulls out his wallet and starts rifling through his wallet. I think he's going to give me like a business card or something, right? You know, I'm hoping that he's going to give me a business card. But he pulls out like a 10 spot and gives it to me. And he goes, is that enough? And I'm like, I, this is a, like a promotional. I just gave it to you. Like, <laughs> listen to my band if you like it. And then let me know if you like it. And he's all, hey, nobody gives it away for free. You're <laughs> worth it. And I was like, whoa whoa okay that is the most important thing that a musician can hear and that any artist can hear is that you are worth the time you are worth the money and to have someone of that of that you know gravitas say that to little old me was really fucking yeah, important that's great i you yeah. can't like i tell people this that's all the awesome. time that are in college and everything like you cannot give your crap away for free you cannot give it away for free because that's a lifeblood. So here's my advice uh, to, to artists or whatever. Uh, support each other and uh, support each other with dollars. I, art dies without its lovers. So you got to spread the wealth. And I am a firm believer there's enough room for everyone. I do my best to try to bring people in on anything I can possibly, uh, possibly can because I want to support talented artists. So I think that's uh, super important. That's, that's a good piece of advice. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's do a outro intro here. Uh, today on the show, you've been listening to Parker Jacobs of, uh, Yo Gabba Gabba and the art of PJ on Instagram. Uh, you've been listening to, uh, Greg Deal of gregdeal.com, uh, uh, local indigenous, uh, um, uh, artist from Colorado. Uh, you've been hearing, uh, Kyle Lester, uh, one of our favorite punk rockers from San Jose. Uh, and street artists and uh, a, a graphic design master uh, Duke Duel from San Diego uh, <laughs> thank you guys thank for you, being yeah. part of the show uh, this is goodness and if you guys are uh,